Okay, so let's make a start uh, with respect to this lecture on sensor systems and applications. So you recall we were discussing about chapter four. So just, just a brief recap <clears throat> of uh, where we are in this uh, a, in this module. Let me hide this. Okay, so uh, we are discussing chapter four of this module. So we have uh, a chapter four remaining and uh, a specific application area that we'll discuss next uh, in next week. We are seventh uh, today. Next Monday is 14th. Yeah, next Monday will be the last lecture, okay? Because uh, we are supposed to end uh, on 18th of December. Then we'll resume next uh, next year. So next Monday will be last lecture and we'll focus on uh, on a specific application area. I will uh, inform you which application area and how we are going to do it on next Monday. Right now, today we need to wrap up this uh, chapter four, okay? and. Uh, uh, you have your class test that has been rescheduled on Thursday at nine o'clock. Okay, so based on your uh, on requests from from students who are involved in hackathon and everything, so I have uh, forwarded the test for uh, for for Thursday. Uh, okay, so let's see where we were where we have reached in this. Let me do a brief recap of what we have discussed concerning IoT access technologies. What we are discussing here, we are discussing about all the communication technologies that uh, we have for, for IoT. And uh, as I've already explained, it is, we have two types of uh, access technologies, two types of communication technologies, short range technologies and long range technologies. And uh, when it comes to IoT, there are some specific requirements uh, that those communication technologies should, uh, should have. Normally we are transmitting small amount of data, but very frequently. So this is the first thing we need to note when it comes to uh, IoT uh, access technologies. Uh, and, uh, and, and, and those uh, technologies, uh, let, let me hear from, from some of you, uh, what are the requirements for, for communication technologies for IoT? We have discussed, already discussed about, uh, a, about this. Let me see. Uh, Divya, Jumok. Any any requirement you are able to recall for the communication technology? What how how the communication should be? Divya, Jumok. Let me see on the chat. Uh, no, I'm not receiving anything. Anything you can... Uh, if not, uh, Daniel, Ashley. Uh, to communicate easily. Communicate easily. So this is uh, normally in all all uh, networks you need to be able to communicate easily. But what 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 characteristic of the communication uh, that we are that we are talking for IoT specifically for IoT that we should have it in the communication technology? Anything? Mm. No. If not, let's try Janushka Badal. Janushka Badal. We said a number of things concerning the communication technology. So already I've told you that uh, we communicate very frequently, but small amount of data. Yeah, Janushka Badal. Any requirements you're able to recall? Very, it's not difficult. We have lengthily discussed about this. Yannick? Yes. Uh, low latency. Low latency. Yes, this is one. Low latency because you uh, some uh, some of those IoT application you need to the data needs to reach uh, the destination very fast. So as uh, the information is still valid, otherwise the information will become out of date, will become stale. So yes, this is one for for many IoT application. Latency should be very low. It is time critical. Uh, and latency should be it should be very very low. So yes, one one uh, requirement. I want another one. Uh, Keshav Kalichan. Uh, transmission range. 
uh, okay, transmission range. So what, what uh, do you say? Should be, what kind of range it should be? So it should be able to transmit data uh, to uh, lo long, longer ranges at lower frequencies if possible. Okay, okay, good. So yeah, yeah, frequency range is always a consideration when it comes to IoT application, because at the end of the day, uh, you want the data that you are capturing through your sensors to reach a specific destination. So, uh, and, and, and you won't be able to make all your sensor nodes uh, be able to communicate directly to the internet. So all your sensors will send the data to some gateway, the, the gateway will send it to a cloud, cloud platform, yes. So uh, I'm still not getting the most important one. Let me continue with uh, uh, Tosif Edu. Bid for hyper hyperscale. Oh uh, yes, yes, true, true. They should uh, be able to accommodate a very large number of nodes, not ten, not hundred, not one thousand, but we are talking in terms of millions. So this is a good uh, requirement uh, that it should be high, uh, uh, be able to scale very in very large numbers. We are not talking about a few PCs, a few laptops. We are talking about millions of sensors. Uh, I'm still not getting the most obvious one. Uh, Irfan, Mohamed Irfan, so what's it? We are talking about IoT, we are talking about sensors. The communication should be, the communication technology should be. So what's it, anything? The most obvious one we, you have, you, uh, uh, your friend have already said a number of good uh, things, yeah, true. But uh, there is one requirement that is very obvious. So, but, you know, so let's try Adele Rose. Low power consumption. Obviously, this is a very obvious requirement. Uh, we have lengthily discussed about it. It should be low power. Whatever communication you're implementing, it should be low power because uh, those sensors, they are battery operated and then and, and you won't, don't want to deplete their, their energy. One of them, I will put this one to be one of uh, the, the top most, the most important one, that the communication technology should be low power, okay? And, and I think we have lengthily discussed about, about this one, that the communication should be low power. Let's continue with respect, okay. So, yes, uh, uh, we are discussing about IoT access technology. So we have just seen, in a, a, we have refreshed uh, our mind on a number of requirements what kind of communication technology should be, short distance, long distance, low latency, low power, it should be able to scale, hyperscale, so a large number of nodes. So all these points you should recall eh, when we talk about, about IoT communication technology. So let's see, uh, this is what we have just done, this reflection here, IoT, IoT connectivity. Let's continue, the different standards. And yes, most of, uh, most of uh, the IoT, uh, a, a systems, they are based on the IEEE 800.15.4. Okay, it is this one, IoT 800.15.8.4. Let's continue. So this is a brief about the IoT architecture. You see here, IEEE 800.15.4 down, but you have other technologies that you can that you can implement. There's something called six low wireless band that we have discussed. It do a linking between lower layers and upper layers. I will come back to this. Let's continue. Yes, uh, these are very com uh, most common technologies when it comes to IoT, BLE, Bluetooth, Z-Wave, Z 6 low wireless fan, sub-1 gigahertz, LoRa 1, SyncFox. I think we have discussed up to, if I'm mistaken, up to LoRa also. I uh, will try to wrap up, uh, uh, wrap up the other technologies today, but I'll browse you, refresh you on the other technologies. We discuss about, this is again, IoT connectivity. It should be, you see here, short range, short range solution. It is in, in terms of Zigbee, Bluetooth, long range uh, solution, more in terms of uh, SyncFox, LoRa. Different use cases. Yeah, Bluetooth, we say that there's a new version of Bluetooth, which is called BLE. Bluetooth low energy, and you already see the low energy is uh, is there. So this is another version of Bluetooth where the power consumption of Bluetooth has been reduced significantly in order to fit uh, IoT world, in order to fit those IoT IoT sensors. Uh, I won't go into those details again. The power, the data rate you notice here is not very high because we don't need high data rate in IoT because we very often sh uh, transmit 
a small amount of data, but very, very frequently. This is a protocol stack. Another technology that is commonly used mainly in home automation system is called Z, uh, a Z wave. Okay, for lighting, for security systems, uh, in swimming pools, for locks and doors and everything. So Z wave is a common is a common technology. Again, uh, low power, but the range is quite uh, short here. We are talking about 30 meters. So this is why it is mainly used in home automation. Uh, and and, and uh, Z-Wave is designed to provide reliable low latency. You see here, low latency, that is the time it takes to transmit is very, is very less. Yeah, this one is very important. Sixth low wireless span. Okay, let me again turn to the clause because this is very, very important. You will be assessed on this point. What is the six low wireless span about? What is the whole objective of six low wireless span? What we are trying to do with this technology? It is another technology, not uh, Bluetooth, not Z-Wave, but we are talking about six low wireless span. What is the whole idea behind six low wireless span? Let me go to the clause. Uh, Ritu Ram, just Ritu Ram, just what what do you think about six low wireless span? What it is about? Yeah, Ram, just are oh, you around? Yes. Yeah. So what is uh, any any anything you can say about six low wireless pan? Um, it is a low power network. Okay, it's a network technology, low power. Yes, but uh, what it is used for? Uh, let's try uh, Shahana Sufarali. What is its main use? Why do we use this technology mainly? Six low wireless pan we are talking. Yes, Sahana, Safar Ali. Okay, on chat, yes. Anything you can say about main purpose of six low wireless pan? Jason Henry. Uh, yes. What do you think about six low wireless pan? I think it's user mapping of the sensor device to the internet. Okay, very good. I see Shahana also has replied more or less in the same uh, direction. It maps 800.15.4 to TCP IP, that is the, the internet. Yeah, I recall last, uh, last time when uh, we discussed, this is something I've said, main purpose of six low wireless pan. So you are both right. Uh, 800, 800, IEEE 802.15.4 cannot connect to the internet. It is not IP enabled. And most IoT uh, network, they are based on 802.15.4. So it cannot connect to the internet. So and at the end of the day, I want my data to go to the internet. So how to make a network which is not IP enabled transmit data to the internet. So what do we do? We implement a layer that is called six low wireless pan that do the adaptation there's an adaptation layer because the packets also are very much different tcp ip packet and ip 100.15.4 a packet they are not of the same size they are different so this layer do this translation from ip 100.15.4 to tcp ip from tcp ip to ip 100.15.4 so this is a main purpose recall it very a uh, very well okay so again, uh, same uh, kind of uh, 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 specification that uh, low throughput, low cost, low power, these things that is uh, for six low wireless span. So the main purpose is to have an adaptation layer here uh, on and above our 800.15.4 in order for it to communicate to the, to the internet. You can see here, it is low power topologies include store mesh, I'm just browsing you through the a most important information. So here is a problem. No method exists to make IP run over 800.15.4. This is the main issue. This is the main problem that six low wireless span is trying is trying to resolve. Okay. So we try to 
put a layer on top of it. Even the traditional protocols that works on TCP IP will not work on our IoT, IoT network. Uh, the goal here is to define an adaptation layer. You see here, adaptation layer. What adaptation is happening from this packet to the other packet? From IP to the 15.4 to uh, TCP, uh, TCP IP to IP, IP packet. So this is what is six low wireless band about. You notice here down, down we have a IP to the 15.4 and on top of it, we are trying to implement IP, IPv6. And this is the architecture. And uh, these are some more information about it. And one technology that has implemented six low wireless band is Thread. It is called Thread. Uh, it's a networking technology for IoT. It is IPv6 based, low power mesh networking technology for IoT product. So this is uh, gaining lots of popularity nowadays. Okay, so we call this thread. It is a communication technology. It is based on six low wireless band. It is already supported by uh, more than 50, uh, 50 companies. It is low power and everything. And Google, Samsung, and everything, all those providers, they are supporting this uh, this technology. It provided a rate of uh, only up to 250 kbps, so which is good for, which is okay for our for our IoT. Yeah, another thing that I've already discussed with you, I think we discussed this as well, all right? So the sub one gigahertz RF. Yeah, anyone can tell me about the sub one gigahertz. RF, what, what it is about, what is its advantage, what we're trying to achieve with such kind of technology, sub one gigahertz RF. Let me go to the class again. I just want to know what, is, what this technology is about, what we're trying to achieve with this, with this technology. Gosai Kaviraj. Gosai Kaviraj. Yes. Yeah, so what is this uh, technology about? We're talking about uh, sub one gigahertz RF. What we try to achieve with it? Uh, we, we are trying to achieve a higher, higher range for communication. Okay, good. Yeah, yeah. So sub one gigahertz, its main objective, because Bluetooth, Zigbee, Z-Waves, all these technologies, they are short distance. Here, the whole objective of this technology is to go long distance, because sometimes we want to transmit our data. Our gateway can be quite far. So from our sensing nodes to the gateway or to the internet. So we, uh, we want to cover longer, longer distances. So this uh, sub one gigahertz RF is uh, uh, is a long range technology. Anyone in the class can tell me how do we achieve this long range by by doing what? Lower frequency. Exactly. So this is the main point again here. Uh, this when we talk about sub one gigahertz, why it is called sub one gigahertz? Uh, uh, because we are we are going below one gigahertz. You know your Wi-Fi. Your Wi-Fi. Can, can you see my, my screen here? I've highlighted sub one gigahertz. Yes. Okay, good. So just to confirm that you're able to see what I'm showing to you. Okay, so sub one gigahertz RF is, for example, your Wi-Fi operate at which frequency? Wi-Fi? 2.4 gigahertz. Yeah, 2.4 uh, gigahertz. Okay, so uh, the range of uh, Wi-Fi is not that far. It is in terms of 100 feet or uh, also. So it cannot go very, very far because it is using 2.4 gigahertz, which is quite higher, higher frequency. Now, when we talk about sub one gigahertz RF, the radio frequency is below one gigahertz, not in terms of 1.523 gigahertz, but we are talking about less than one gigahertz. We are talking about in the range of 800, 900 megahertz okay 800 900 megahertz even 300 megahertz 400 megahertz which is lower frequency uh, a, a signal and low frequency signal means uh, longer wavelength longer wavelength means <clears throat> it can travel uh, further it can travel longer longer distances so this is the uh, what is sub one gigahertz uh, rf and you see here 
this spectrum band below one gigahertz is particularly useful for IoT application. What kind of advantages do we get with it? Range. The range is very long as compared to uh, 2.4 gigahertz. We are talking long range mode that can achieve more than 100 kilo a kilometer coverage. And uh, another characteristic of these technologies, low power consumption. Yeah, anyway, IoT should be low power consumption. And another yeah, big advantage of this technology uh, is uh, interference, low, uh, low impact of interference, that it is more, how do we call it? It is more resistance to interference. It is more resistant to interference. So it is not affected by, for example, uh, building trees. It can uh, go through, uh, go through uh, objects and, and your, your signal will still go on the, on the other side. So this is one sub one gigahertz RF. There are technologies that have implemented this sub one gigahertz RF. I will mention some of those technologies as, yeah, already it is on this slide. Uh, sub one gigahertz angel just for application or in long range, low power. You see what we are trying to achieve here? Two things, two things that seems to be conflicting two things for communication that seems to be conflicting long range low power normally when you you talk about longer range it uses more power here we're talking about long range but low still low low power some technologies that have implemented it is LoRaWAN, SyncFox, i to eight hundred dot eleven ah so these technologies have have used sub one gigahertz arf Let me move to the next one. Okay, so this was, uh, I will come back to sub one gigahertz of even IP 100.11ah is a technology that we can consider to be sub one gigahertz RF. Okay, so let's discuss about some of those, some of those technologies. Let's start with uh, IEEE 800.11. If I don't put the AH there, IEEE 800.11, it is what? Anyone in the close? No, my Wi-Fi. It's our normal Wi-Fi, exactly. Our normal Wi-Fi. Our normal Wi-Fi cannot be used for IoT directly because it is uh, it, it still consumes quite a, uh, a large amount of uh, power. So uh, IEEE has come up with another version of Wi-Fi, which is called IEEE 802.11ah. The AH there has been added. So this is another version of Wi-Fi. It is a wireless network protocol published in 2017, quite recent. Okay. And uh, it is called Wi-Fi Halo. Wi-Fi Halo is pronounced Halo. One Wi-Fi Halo. So it uses, you see the frequency that it uses? Low frequency. It uses sub one gigahertz, less than one giga, eight gigahertz. Not the, not the normal 2.5 gigahertz of, of Wi-Fi. Okay, so this is the difference uh, here with this standard. It is a, another version of, of uh, Wi-Fi, which is supposed to be low power, which is supposed to be, it says here, it also benefits from lower energy consumption, okay? Allowing the creation of large groups of station. It can support uh, uh, thousands of, of devices for, for IoT. And at the same time, it provides a wider coverage. Okay, this is what we are trying to achieve with this new version of, of uh, a Wi-Fi. You can see a comparison here, not a comparison, but the frequency range in different countries, it is, it is different for this 802.11 AAH. And it uses a technical channelization, okay, defines channels based upon spectrum that is available in a given country. It depends on which country you're operating. For example, in the US, it has, it is 16 megahertz for uh, 900 to 928 uh, a, a megahertz ISM band. It uses this range of this range of frequency, and it can use one, two, four, eight, sixteen channels for for communication. Yeah, uh, advantages of uh, 802.11 AH. Okay, the MAC, the medium access control. It provides enhanced LMS. For example, support large number of stations. This is the support large number of, of nodes. Okay, how you can read it uh, here. And uh, power saving, it saves uh, power. This is what makes it interesting for IoT. It's a growing issue and it's used for many IoT and M2M application, machine to machine a, a communication. 
So this is a technique used for saving energy. There's something called a team station. This station remains awake all the time and continuously monitor the network. And then uh, you have non-team station. These normally, they doze, okay? They, they go, go to sleep basically, okay? So then you have uh, uh, throughput enhancement that is in terms of uh, the data rate that you can, you can get here, okay? And uh, the amount of energy that it uses to transmit uh, data. So you have a compact MAC header that makes it more, a more, more efficient and it uses a, a new mechanism for MAC in order for it to remove some, some overhead so as it become more, more efficient. So all these are advantages of, of the ATP 11AH. Okay, so we have talked about uh, uh, about sub one gigahertz, sub one gigahertz RF. There is a technology that is called low power wide area networks, not to confuse with six low wireless band. Six low wireless band was a different thing. Here we're talking about low power wide area network. Wide area network, we are talking definitely long, long distance, but long distance that uses low power. This is what is required for IoT, okay? So there is a, a set of technologies that we can classify as LP1, that is low power one. So one technology cannot serve all projected applications for IoT. For example, Wi-Fi, BLE, normally they are widely adopted uh, uh, technologies. Uh, you have cellular technology, is a great fit for application that needs high data throughput, but have a power source, you see here? So if you have power, then you, go, you can go for cellular. If you have uh, the, necessary, the necessary power. These Wi-Fi, BLE, they are more for short distance. So it cater for, for another category of application. But however, you do have what is called long distance, low power, offers multi-year battery life. And you see here, what, what are we talking here? We're talking about very long uh, lifetime of battery. We are talking about even in terms of, of years of battery. So it should be using very less, very less uh, power. Application that needs to send small amount of data over long distances, Per hour for varying environment. So this is the target here. Okay, long distances but small amount of data for low power wide area wide area network. So on this side here you see lo local area network. If for example Wi-Fi, okay, uh, it still uses some amount of power and everything. On this side you see cellular, your GSM whatever, uh, wide coverage and everything, but it uses some amount of energy. And on the middle side here, LoRa, you see example is LoRa. It is a low power consumption, low cost, but long distance uh, a technology because it is a wide area, wide area network. So here it is. Here it is. We have a technology called LoRa, LoRa One. Okay. Uh, LoRa stands for long range. Okay. Long range one wide area network is a patented digital wireless data communication technology. Obviously, it belongs to a particular company, but it has become very popular. I think, yeah, I've got the bot No, it was Sigfox or Laura. Uh, I, I met one of the CEO uh, of, that, uh, of that company. He was here in, uh, at the University of Mauritius some six, seven years uh, back when, when the technology was first uh, introduced. Uh, but I'm not able to recall whether it was Laura or it was Sig, uh, Sigfox. So, uh, Laura, obviously, it is a proprietary uh, technology, but, but Laura has become so popular that so many uh, LoRa gateways, LoRa sensors uh, that support LoRa has is being uh, are being sold on the on, on the market. The big advantage you get with LoRa is its long distance. For example, you need to cover a city with sensors. Uh, you you need you can implement only one gateway, one LoRa gateway. Then your your sensors are distributed all around in a, in a city. Your, your sensors, if they are LoRa enabled, they will be able to communicate directly with the, uh, with the gateway. They can cover very long distance and reach the gateway and the gateway is connected to the internet eventually. So this is the advantage you get. You want to cover large area with sensors. So this is a very interesting technology. The only thing is that you need to buy sensors excuse me, that are uh, LoRa enabled and you need to, have to buy what is called uh, LoRa, LoRa gateways. Uh, I'm trying to acquire, we, we had a LoRa gateway, if I'm not mistaken, at the University of Mauritius. 
I need to check whether it is still operational. But anyway, I have ordered a number of those. Uh, for, for, one, for one particular project, I have ordered some uh, uh, LoRa, a, a LoRa um, gateway and LoRa a sensors. So uh, let's see what this technology is about. It is license free sub gigahertz. Now you understand what is the meaning of this sub gigahertz radio frequency RF. So it uses like 169, 433, 868 for Europe and in America it is 915. So LoRa enables very long range transmission, more than 10 kilometers, so quite long distance with low power consumption. You see here, again, long range, low power, we are trying to achieve, to achieve it. So the technology is presented in two parts. So there are, there are two uh, parts of the technology. One is LoRa, the physical layer, that is the tick, excuse me, the, a, the physical part of it, and LoRa one, the upper, the upper layers for the for the communication. So you learn more about LoRa as we proceed here. So it is bidirectional, so you can do uplink and downlink uh, a both. Okay. So it is low rate, so we don't we cannot achieve very high uh, data rate. We don't need very high data rate when it comes to LoRa. Uh, the architecture, the topologies in terms of store of store of stores, you can see. A topology down here so after you have gateways you have relays these are your sensors down here that transmit to a relay relay sent, uh, sent to a to a gateway gateway sent to a to a server the relays they are optional it says here optional you can have devices transmitting directly to your to your gateway so this is again the network architecture it is it's from a mesh uh, let's see where are, are we here are our sense our nodes sensors transmitting to gateway, gateway connecting to a network server and, and here the application, application server. Okay, so it increases the communication rate and cell size of the network. While this increases the range, also add complexity, reduces network capacity and reduces battery battery lifetime. Okay, so they are, they are, the, the further, the bigger your, uh, your, your, your communication range, your cell size, uh, the more power it consumes and uh, and, and more complex it uh, it, it becomes. So long-range store architecture makes the most sense for preserving battery data. This is why we use a a, a, a store architecture. What, what we call what we are calling here a long-range uh, a store architecture. So here we are saying that if each node will have to forward information for other nodes, then obviously. Uh, it will consume a lot of nodes. So this one sending to this one, this one sending to this one, this one sending to this one, and then it reaches a gateway. So all these nodes will be consuming energy. What we are talking here, the nodes sent directly to the gateway. You notice that the nodes they are sending to the gateway, all the nodes they are sending to the gateway. So on this way, because they are long range, they can cover long distances, so they can send directly to the gateway. That is saving energy. Long range store architecture makes the most sense for preserving battery lifetime. So you may be asked, for example, how come in LoRa we we save uh, we save energy? So this is what you should be what you should be explaining. This is what you should be uh, what you should be explaining that uh, we are using what is called a long range store topology, where each node can send directly to the to the gateway. They need to do, they should not be passing through other nodes in order to reach to reach the the gateway. It provide what is called a long range connectivity can be can be achieved. So these are a few uh, characteristics of LoRa, a LoRa one. It is IP connected. The, the physical layer is based on this. The bit rate is in terms of very low bit rate, 20 kilobits per second. The kind of devices that we use, they, it is in three classes, class A, class B and class C. And the services, geolocation, specific location and security that can be implemented on on LoRa. Okay, so we have seen uh, one technology that can be considered as this one, low power wide area networks. So uh, if you ask for an example of a low power wide area network technology, you should, uh, a LoRa one is such a, such a technology. 